and these are live visuals coming in from Andhra Pradesh's Sri Hari Kota Satish Dhawan Space Center where after Chandrayaan 3 and Aditya L1 India is all set to add another feather to its hat with a successful test flight launch of Gaganyaan. The crude spacecraft which is now on its mission will test the safety mechanism that will allow the crew to escape the spacecraft in case the mission is aborted due to a malfunction. Minus 40 seconds. Minus 35 seconds. Pajolan dekhenge TV D1 ka. Now these are the visuals that you're getting on your screen from Satish Tavan Space Center in Sri Harikota, Andhra Pradesh. As Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, will conduct Kaganyan's first test vehicle abort mission, TVD-1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Hold is observed. यह था समय प्रज्वलन किया गया था लेकिन फिलहाल यह होल्ड पे आ चुका है। इट सीम्स ऑन होल्ड एट फाइव सेकेंड्स व्हेन इट वाज लेफ्ट टू लॉन्च। You were getting visuals on your screen from Satish Dhawan Space Center in the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota, where the test flight launch had begun and the countdown had begun, although at five seconds left to launch, there has been a hold on the launch as of now. We're still waiting to get more details on this, but as of now, the mission is on hold and we are waiting to get more details. The visuals are coming from Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota, Andhra Pradesh. As the Indian Space Research Organization, was conducting Gaganyaan's first flight test vehicle abort mission. However, at 05 seconds before the launch, it was put to hold. The mission is put on hold at the moment and we are waiting to get more updates on this as we continue to cover this launch uh, from, this from Satish Kavan Space Center. The, uh, the liftoff attempt of TVD1 uh, could not happen today. The, initially, the launch was scheduled at 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. There was a postponement of the liftoff time to 8.45 due to weather situation. And uh, we had a very smooth ALS. Uh, the automatic launch sequence leading up to the command to lift off uh, the, the engine, but the engine ignition has not happened in the nominal uh, course. Uh, we have to find out what went wrong with that. Uh, the vehicle is safe. The, all the entire vehicle is very safe. Uh, we will have to reach the vehicle and then look at what has happened now. Uh, we will come back soon after analyzing what has uh, triggered the automatic launch sequence holding the vehicle. So what has happened is the onboard the computer which is doing this function, the ground checkout computer which is doing the function has withheld the launch in view of the anomaly observed. So we will come back with the anomaly 
uh, understanding and correct it and schedule the launch very soon. Uh, that will be announced a little later after the analysis is completed. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us for this launch attempt today. Uh, thank you so much. Bye bye. Update coming in. As the mission has been put on hold due to some problems and to get more details on this very soon we will be joined by Siddharth MP. Okay, Siddharth, uh, what has happened? What has gone wrong in the space in the in the launch of the mission? Yeah, so in fact we were just standing uh, atop our vantage point and looking, you know, anxiously towards the skies in anticipation of this launch. But what has happened is that uh, typically this is a standard operating procedure for all launches. So irrespective of whether it's a large rocket, small rocket, in the last couple of um, you know minutes towards the launch or liftoff moment, what happens is there is something known as an automatic launch sequence that is initiated, which means all the health systems of the rocket are continuously monitored by computers. So there is no human intervention essentially in the last final you know uh, say 10 or 20 minutes or maybe even the final one hour to the launch. The computer is monitoring the entire health of the rocket. See, it is not humanly possible to monitor thousands and thousands of systems on board a very complicated machine like this. So what the computers will do, they will look at all the parameters. It's like, you know, you and I doing a health checkup. So the, you know, devices will be able to tell you what is your health status. Likewise, the rocket will be undergoing a complete health check as it stands on the launch pad, waiting for liftoff. So every moment, there are several parameters being checked. And the moment a computer identifies a sort of anomaly in this process, if it finds that something is amiss, if it finds that there is something going wrong, the computer automatically halts the launch and then it alerts the people manning the computers that, you know, we've held this launch back for X, Y or Z reason. So this is a standard operating procedure worldwide. So when the computers detect an anomaly, they don't go for a launch because of two, three reasons. One. When the computer detects it, it clearly means that there is some problem with some system or subsystem, so we can't launch. Second thing, the humans have an option of overriding it and still launching it, even against the computer's will. But what happens in that case is that there could always be a catastrophe of an explosion. And an explosion at the launch pad could mean, you know, total destruction because the launch pad typically and the infrastructure there is several times more expensive than a rocket. So if a rocket explodes at the launch pad, it means that that place cannot be used for the next couple of months until you rebuild it. So all space agencies worldwide have the standard operating procedure. It's okay to delay a lot. You will lose a lot. Um, and of course, there'll be people, you know, uh, raising questions as to why the launch did not happen. But that is okay because what they want to avoid is an explosion at the launch pad or perhaps even an explosion in the sky. So for that pure reason, the launch has been put on hold. We have to remember that this is, uh, by design, this is a new rocket. Although the systems on board are you know, legacy systems, it's been flying for at least 30 years. The engine on board this rocket has been flying for more than 30 years. But the point we have to remember here is that this vehicle by design is entirely new. This vehicle by configuration and by technology is entirely new. So there has been some issue uh, in the vehicle system that has been detected. And that is what has led to ISRO putting the launch on hold for today. So the next uh, thing for ISRO to do will be for the scientists and engineers to go to the uh, rocket or the launch vehicle, analyze its systems, and then zero in on what led to this failure, and then come back for another day, another launch, and you know try and get this rocket Sh off the ground. Sean, so when do we expect common. that other, uh, the you know the next steps? The other day, as you said, when can we, uh, according to you and your understanding, when can we ex uh, expect the latest developments coming on it? So, uh, to talk a uh, little technically about this matter, solid fuel rockets work like firecrackers, right? You you ignite them and then they burn immediately. Liquid fuel rockets are much more complicated. They have thousands of moving parts in them. So, it's not easy to rectify these faults. You'll have to perhaps take that entire rocket away from the launch pad, dismantle it and analyze its system. So, this is what actually takes time. It's not rectifying the fault, but it's the entire process of dismantling the systems and subsystems and then looking into the fault, identifying it, and then ensuring that it's put back together, you know, in the most perfect form possible. The same rocket has to be put back perfectly. So this is all the most, uh, this is what makes it really complicated. And we have to remember that, you know, this can't happen anytime today, clearly, because of the fact that this rocket actually has very toxic fuels on board. So they're known as uh, 
UDMS and dinitrogen tetroxide. So these are very toxic fuels and when both of these fuels come in contact with each other, they start burning. That's what causes the you know, sure. rocket to push itself. So okay, so that, that, it will take at least a few weeks to you know, rectify this and come back to launch. Sure, sure. Thank you for all those updates, Siddharth. Thank you for joining us. Now let's listen in to the ISRO chief S. Somnath about what went wrong and what were the hiccups at the time of the launch. Uh, this is from SDS Ishar. The, uh, the liftoff attempt of TVD1 uh, could not happen today. The, initially the launch was scheduled at 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. There was a postponement of the liftoff time to 8.45 due to weather situation. And uh, we had a very smooth ALS. Uh, the automatic launch sequence leading up to the command to lift off uh, the, the engine, but the engine ignition has not happened in the nominal uh, course. Uh, we have to find out what went wrong with that. Uh, the vehicle is safe. The, all the entire vehicle is very safe. Uh, we will have to reach the vehicle and then look at what has happened now. Uh, we will come back soon after analyzing what has uh, triggered the automatic launch sequence holding the vehicle. So what has happened is the onboard the computer which is doing this function, the ground checkout computer which is doing the function has withheld the launch in view of the anomaly observed. So we will come back with the anomaly uh, understanding and correct it and schedule the launch very soon. Uh, that will be announced a little later after the analysis is completed. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us for this launch attempt today. Uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.